You know that Greek myth where there's a guy that keeps rolling the rock up the hill but as soon as it gets up to the top of the hill it just rolls back down and whilst that's also happening whilst he's pushing it they're like crows pecking at him well that's what it feels like with me and my tbr at this point in october i read a total of 16 books which is phenomenal it rarely happens in fact this year is my best reading year since 2019 maybe even before that and i also hold 50 bucks in october so clearly i have a buying issue not a reading issue but i think let's get into the books that i actually did read in october and in another video i will be talking all about the books that i got in october <sighs> i think let's just dive right in so as i mentioned october was a really great reading month for me in general i was really i'm really happy with the books that i read there were a lot of books that i finished that i was reading for a while and there were some where i finished series which for me is very rare these days simply because i am like that kid who when they see something shiny as a baby, they just want it. Or if they see the lollipop, they want that lollipop that they see and not the one that's already in their mouth. It's quite it's quite a interesting relationship I have with my reading at the moment. So the very first book I read was The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike. Obviously, I wanted to read it because October, spooky season, and the Netflix series was coming out. I was disappointed in this. I gave this three stars. I found this book to be very religious. I was kind of shocked at how religious it was because it isn't something I was expecting, especially since Christopher Pike is a horror author and this book was far from horror. Sure there were some really interesting topics brought up, some that were like slightly on the scary side, but more about scary mortality, not really scary oh my gosh I'm gonna leave the lights on the whole night. That's what the TV series is like. The TV series is filled with horror stories that these kids that have fatal illnesses like cancers and so on are living in this hospice but to pass the time these kids meet at midnight to tell scary stories. But the stories are so not scary. But yeah as I mentioned very religious but it was a good fiction so if you know that it's a fiction and not a horror i think this book would be better but i gave this three stars it could have been better i then decided to pick up all olympus volume one by rachel smith i've been seeing this around for a while i bought it and read it in october which makes me feel really good about myself and as i mentioned i'm really into greek mythology i have always been i've always loved reading about it and this is a fantastic modernization of greek gods and i really am enjoying this so far i've already read volume two spoiler for november but this one i didn't love a hundred percent I was kind of unsure of where the story was going to go. I feel like it, it definitely is an introduction to all the characters and what we can kind of expect from the characters behavior wise. But I'm definitely excited to keep reading this. These books are fantastic gifts, by the way, with festive season coming up. These are really well made. We have a fantastic color, like it's full color. The quality is impeccable. Highly recommend these are the paperbacks and they come in just over at 300 rand at most South African stores. I gave this four stars, by the way. Then I finally finished reading Dune. As you can see, towards the end, I stopped caring because honestly, it felt like the last book or the last section. I don't know, Paul was on some sort of drug or Frank Herbert was on some kind of drugs because we skipped so much time forward and it's not very clear initially how much time has passed. But then you realize like Paul has a child and you're like, what is happening? And I will forever mark the fact that this is a very popular sci-fi series and our main character's name is Paul out of everything. Come on, Frank. My notes on this was, bruh, this book was boring. If you thought the movie was boring, read the book. You might have a change of opinion regarding the movie. I gave us three stars. I could see why some people liked it, but I also think it's important to note that when this was published, it was serialized, meaning that it was published on a monthly slash weekly basis in a newspaper or a magazine. So people got to read sections of this at a time and those books tend not to make the best full length novels. I will say that I really did enjoy the political intrigue of this. I might continue on with Dude Messiah, which is the next one, just because it is a lot shorter and maybe I have a change of heart, but I gave this three stars. I then had the absolute privilege of hosting the read along for The Eye of the Beholder by Margie Orford. This is a South African author. I thoroughly enjoyed this. This is four stars. I would check up some trigger warnings. There's some domestic violence, some child pornography. This follows three women who have encountered trauma in various parts of their lives in various ways. We mainly follow our main character, Cora, who is an artist and her relationships tend to have a ripple effect. I really, really enjoyed it. 
this was harrowingly stunning and an incredible revenge thriller because that's what it essentially is it's a revenge thriller if you are looking for something like that i would definitely think about picking it up it goes so quickly we read it in short increments you can definitely read this in one go easy peasy lemon squeezy style because you're just so intrigued to see what happens i then picked up both the gilded cage and the blood traded by the net Loney. i want to put these together so i felt like the gilded cage was suffered a little bit from second book syndrome where the first book was so action-packed and the second one was a little bit more about let's show you how this world looks like now our main character kiva was initially in the first book she found herself in prison in a very brutal prison the story follows from there this is going to be spoilers for book one from this point but essentially Kiva is now saved, she's out, and she has to kind of assimilate to life outside of prison, where she doesn't really have to keep a guard up, but she has to choose between her family and the family she found in prison, and I think it's a very difficult decision. And I gave this one, I gave this one four stars. I then read The Blood Trader kind of immediately after. These books are really easy to read, by the way. I read both of these with Roseanne as a buddy read, and I liked this one a lot more. This one was a lot more action-packed. Not that I didn't like the political intrigue or the slower plot in this one but I will say that this one is a little bit more action-packed I did feel like some parts of it could have been wrapped up quicker it didn't need to be this long you could kind of have had two books in this trilogy if you will but that's just my personal opinion I still rated this one quite high four four and a half I couldn't decide between the two because it's not quite a four and it's not quite a five action-packed full of turns and adventures then I picked up a ebook called Supernatural PI I did not like this I DNF this there was something about the writing this book is written by a woman but the way the women in the book were described was so female and so sexualized and I did not like it, like overly sexualized. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I wish I had a passage, but the next book I read was Our Crooked Hearts by Melissa Albert. I read this with Kelly from Velvet Library. I'll have her linked and I really, really enjoyed this one. I gave this one five stars and the best way to describe this was perfectly witchy. It really encompasses everything that you want in an October. The witchy vibes, the witchcraft, the betrayal, the mystery, the angst. It was all here and I really thoroughly enjoyed this. I didn't know where the story was going to go with this one and I'm really pleased with how it ended. I jumped straight into Guild by Raven Kennedy. This is obviously a very popular TikTok dark romance series and I've been told that this book was not a favorite for many people and obviously with the series because it is a dark fantasy it is important that you check the trigger warnings the author does kind of mention in the beginning. I'll read for you. Please note that this series will contain explicit content, dark elements that may be triggering to some. It will include explicit romance, mature language, violence, non-consensual sex and emotional manipulation do keep that in mind when you do pick it up that being said i gave this four stars i really really enjoyed it i thought it was fantastic it didn't give me exactly five star feelings but i really powered through this in like a couple of hours as in like two hours it is just so easy to read it is addictive and i really I liked it and it's a sad story that follows a girl who just really wants to be loved for me that was like the most heartbreaking part is that you know we have our main character oren and oren just wants to have connection with someone and, or form connections with people and this book just shows how difficult that's going to be for her and we definitely go through some parts which is a little bit more of an emotional journey and others where it's more physical. I then picked up A Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This is a proof that I got from work but this was so beautifully written like this author is clearly fantastic at writing. I really do look forward to reading more from her in the future. I really liked this dark alternative to Dracula because this follows Constanta and and her relationship with like Dracula even though his name is never explicitly mentioned. It definitely does follow Dracula and I really love this. I love the description. I loved everything. Five full stars. And then in here there's also a like sequel or a little mini novella sequel after the events of the book and I really loved it. It was very very sweet. That's called An Encore of Roses. I gave that four stars just because it was cute and it was just like a unnecessary but fun to read kind of thing. I then picked up Black Lake Manor. Also got this from work and I DNF this one. I just found the writing to be very very awkward and I couldn't get into it. I was gonna maybe say this for another time but I don't think so. There's nothing about it at the moment that's really pulling me in just because I know I have to fight with the writing to really get into it so it's gonna be a skip for me on this one. I then finally finished House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. Obviously knowing that the third one is coming out next year and that I'll probably have to reread the other two, these two, to get to that one. 
is a little heartbreaking, but it will be made easier with the fact that I got the Illumicrate Special Editions, which is a spoil for next year sometime when they do arrive. But I finished this, I gave this one four stars. It was a stunning beginning and a stunning ending, but the middle was low-key trash. I gave this four stars just because of the ending and the beginning. I felt like there are two mysteries in here and they could have they should have been swapped around in terms of how much attention was paid how much detail how much focus was put onto those mysteries one of them was so lackluster i was like what's the point of making this the full focus i would rather have liked the other mystery that was kind of on the back burner the whole time to be more in the forefront so we could see i don't want to spoil what it was but i definitely think that if someone was truly a friend they wouldn't have kept so many secrets okay i then read daisy darker by alice feeney and i really really enjoyed this one once again another book that has really incredible writing very lyrical very like it just grabbed your attention i would definitely recommend reading this in one go i listened to this initially and i'm definitely going to be picking this up again to read it physically just so i can have those lines that just stick out to me everywhere all the time and this book was just really really incredible this follows Daisy darker who, whose name is featured in a very popular children's book and it's all about her family and the fact that her grand was predicted to die on her 80th birthday and that's coming up and her birthday is on halloween and we kind of see how the family unravels and the story just really surprised me. I don't want to spoil it, but there's a turn in here that I absolutely love. And I definitely will be picking up more from Alice Feeney. I have read something else by her called His and Her, which I liked. Once again, that one also had a really good twist, but this twist just really got me. An excellent read, beautiful writing, and I will definitely be rereading this in the future. But the very last book that I read in the month of October was This Vicious Circle. This was featured on, I think, Hannah Hart's books' YouTube channel. I have her linked, and she really enjoyed this one. I can't say that I I did. I listened to this one and I made a note that this would have probably been better if I read it. I listened to the audiobook on script, I think, because I wanted to listen to one more thriller book in the month of October and I found the plot to be very long and then quick towards the end so it wrapped up way too quickly in my opinion but apparently there might be a sequel for this one. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure but I did feel like the plot was so long-winded. Could have been shorter but it also could have been done differently I think. I wasn't quite happy with how it wrapped up. In fact I don't even think it's that memorable. I gave it three stars but I can't remember too much about it other than the fact that I was just at the end I was like okay. That is my wrap up. As you can see I've read quite a few books. They were quite a few really decently rated books and I definitely am so glad that I finished some of the books that I had on my TBR slash I was reading for a very very long time Ma namely you know Dune and House of Sky and Breath I'm glad I managed to finish those ones just before the end of the year and I definitely felt really happy with all the books I read that were spooky I definitely wanted to do more spooky books but overall you know you can't always look at the downsides or the things that didn't happen let me know down below if you've read any of these if you think I should give any second chances let me know what you thought and let me know how your October went and without further ado, I will see you in the next one.